Hello, this is Brandon with Cypress, and today I'm going to be going over the new selective sync feature that we've created. It's a tool called Webhooks by Cypress. So in a nutshell, what this creation allows you to do is implement a selective sync to control when Salesforce is going to send new lead or contact information into Pardot. Any marketers that we talk to who are using Pardot, they want to be able to have a little bit more control over when Salesforce syncs a new lead or contact um, or anything um, from Salesforce to Pardot. So what we've done at Cypress is we've created a custom Apex class that allows us to send a webhook anywhere where we tell it. So inside of Pardot, when we have our connector settings, we have the ability here to customize our connector preferences and automatically create prospects in Pardot if they are created as a lead or contact in Salesforce. Now, the limitation of this is this means that anytime a new lead or contact is created inside of Salesforce, it will automatically be created inside of Pardot. There's often times where we don't want everything to come over. Maybe we're dealing with a, a 10,000 mailable contact limit and we have way more leads and contacts inside of Salesforce. So we want to be able to have a little bit more control. So the other thing is the default campaign. Let's say we want every every lead that comes in from a specific source to be associated with a specific campaign rather than just the default Salesforce sync. So by turning this off and implementing our new tool, it's no longer going to automatically create the leads and contacts in Pardot if they're created inside of Salesforce from here, but instead we're going to be leveraging our process builder. And what we're going to look at next is our form handler. For this example, we just created a form handler called a Salesforce webhook test. And what we're going to use is the tracker domain. The reason why we use this tracker domain is it's going to make it easier for us to add more of these specifically for handling the call between Salesforce and Pardot. We're going to set up something called a remote site inside of Salesforce. And what we're going to add is go.pardot to that remote site. So now Salesforce knows that it can trust um, this site when we want to post to it uh, inside of Salesforce. So when we create a form handler, it's going to build out this web endpoint URL. This web endpoint URL will be the endpoint that we are going to be using for our process builder. We can add as many uh, field mappings as we'd like, any custom field mappings that you'd like to pass over data from your Salesforce account into Pardot. The one that is required is the email field. So at minimum, we want to make sure that we're including the email field. So now let's hop into Process Builder and see how we make this integration come to life. So we've already started a Process Builder here. The trigger is going to be on a lead when a new lead record is created or edited. And in this example, we're going to do the lead status is updated. So when the lead status is equals qualified, we want to call our webhook. So what we're going to do is we are going to add an action. The action we are going to select is the Apex action. We'll call this send to Pardot. So the class that we're going to use is the one that we've created called Webhooks by Cypress. Now, the Webhook by Cypress class that we created uses what's called an Apex variable. The variable that we have is called the URL. And what we're going to do with this URL is we want to pass the entire value from Salesforce to Pardot. And there's a few different ways that we can do this. A string wouldn't make the most sense because what we're going to say is whatever hard-coded value we put in here is going to be what triggers our endpoint. Um, so it'll work if you just had a endpoint that you were just calling every single time and you didn't want to make changes to it. But in our use case, we want to add some variables. So a few different ways that you can do this, you could create a formula field on your lead record and call it pardot post URL or something like that. What I'm going to do is just create a formula directly inside of this process builder. So we'll click into here to create a formula. I am going to pop over here and grab our endpoint URL. I'm going to wrap the endpoint URL in quotes so it knows that it's a quote. And I'm going to add a query string at the end of this Pardot form handler. So a query string is telling us what to include in the post. So the query string is going to be email equals, which again is referencing that Pardot email query parameter that's required for this form handler to work. We're going to do an and for the formula. So we're outside of this single quote. So now we're saying we're going to pass through this form handler, email equals, and we're going to find our lead email field. 
this is the email field. So you can see we have the email, the lead email field. We could pass through whatever other values that we want, but that's the only one that we're going to pass through. That's the only one that I'm going to pass through now. You can add any additional query parameters that you would like. So if you wanted to pass over a special source or anything like that, you would just continue with this pattern of and, you know, quote, add the parameter, then and. But we're just going to keep it very simple right now and pass over the email because what should happen is when we send a lead over, Pardot is going to be able to find that lead inside of Salesforce and connect them. So now we've got our URL. It's going to be this formula, the Pardot URL equals email, um, lead email, and we're going to save this process. And once we have this set up and we have it configured as we want, we're going to go ahead and activate it. And now anytime that we update one of our leads with the status of qualified, it's going to send to that Pardot form handler. So on this end inside of Pardot, whatever we want to add, whatever completion actions that we want to include, add them to the qualified lead list that's going to add them to an engagement studio or something along those lines. We have the ability to do that um, directly in our form handler. Thanks for watching and I hope this helps and happy Pardotting.